morning everyone and I think this is the most precarious spot I've ever begun one of my videos from but what a beautiful morning it's it's, it's really early the sun is just rising behind the hills here off to my left and there's been some frost it's it's very cold and I'm being treated to wonderful scenery and we've got some wonderful mist and clouds everything is absolutely perfect including the light and how smooth this water is in front of me but there's a lot going on lots to be looking at lots changing in front of me but what i want to talk about in this video and something that i've really found has helped me a lot over the years get better photographs is being patient at a location and just taking your time and not rushing around so i want to expand on that i'll talk a bit more about that in this video but this is looking pretty spectacular so i'm going to grab another shot if i can't without falling in the the water here So before I get into the topic of this video, I thought it may be quite useful for a few people if I discuss what I'm trying to do with this scene and a few of the considerations I've had to take into account. So regarding the composition, I'm using this rock as foreground interest. It's getting some of that warm morning sunlight on it, which is just beautiful. We've got the water, some trees, and there's a few peaks off in the distance, one of which is snow covered, and it looks absolutely beautiful. So in terms of getting the composition to work, I've been relying on being very observant of where the clouds are reflecting in the water, because I've got some empty space to the left of the rock, and I think it looks much better when I've got a nice reflection there. I've been very mindful of the clouds, they're changing all the time, it's flat calm but the clouds are changing and there's been some beautiful cloud formations which really enhance the composition. I've also been watching the mist uh, as it comes and goes and how it affects the scene, so there's a lot to consider there. Now the wind actually picked up for a while and there was a lot of ripples in the water and I could of course do a long exposure to try and smooth that out but as you can see at the moment it is pretty much just flat calm and it looks beautiful as it is so no need to use a filter and no need to use a polarizer the sun is not in the optimal spot for a polarizer to work but there's absolutely no need because the scene when i've been photographing it is beautiful as is i don't want to change that you've seen how difficult it's been for me to balance and take some shots and one of my tripod legs are is in the water it's submerged so i've been very careful as i've been moving around on these loose rocks and so on one not to fall in and hurt myself it's quite treacherous quite uh, slippery but two is not for me to move my tripod or put a foot in the water to cause any ripples because they just would sort of just move along in the water and enter into my photograph so I don't want to disturb the water but yeah a beautiful scene and uh, it's one of those uh, which like I want to talk about for the main topic of this video it's very important just to take time and observe what's happening so I think when we're out doing uh, landscape photography especially if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of free time and you don't get out to do photography a lot it's very tempting to rush around and try and get as many photographs as possible 
during the time that you have rather than focus on getting perhaps one extremely good photograph on that day or on the period of time that you've got. And I think this is something that's uh, really improved my photography over the years is just whenever I'm out, so I'm out for a whole day, so I'm out on a dedicated photography trip for a week or whether I've got two hours, it's really to just try and find something that you think has got the potential to be a really good photograph. Try and establish a really good composition and know what you're waiting on and looking for. So in the case of the photograph that I've taken today, I've realized the importance of the reflections in the water, the positioning of those. I've realized the importance of light and light hitting the correct areas of the scene. I have realized the importance of the clouds their appearance and their positioning and also being very observant of the mist that has been coming and going and what it does to the photograph the parts of the scenery that it conceals and just how it affects the overall look so i've just been watching and observing all these things happening and trying to time my photographs at the optimal time to get the look that i want when everything just aligns now, of course, depending on the type of landscape photography you're doing, depending on the conditions, depending on the location, not everything's going to be changing every few seconds, but very often I find when I'm out, things are changing all the time. The sky, the light, and so on. Even the, the calmness of the water. And I think it just pays to find a really strong composition and just wait. And if you know things are potentially going to change that day in terms of light, clouds, sky, atmosphere and so on. Really concentrate and observe and just look at what's happening to the scene in front of you and try and get the most out of it that you can. So yeah, just something to consider next time you're out doing some landscape photography. Try and come home with one or two, perhaps maybe three at most, very strong images that you're really pleased with rather than coming home with, say, a memory card full of images that you end up being disappointed with. But anyway, for now, I think I've had the, the best of the conditions, as I said, so I think I'll maybe just enjoy a, a few minutes here, have a drink, and uh, yeah, time to call it a day. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed it and perhaps found some useful information. To apply to your own photography. As always, if you can take a second to like the video, I really do appreciate that. And do consider subscribing to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. Thank you so much, and hopefully I'll see you in my next one.